Hey, welcome to church. I know we did all this, and today's a special day uh, for us. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to just set this. Thank you. Um, so, I don't know. I maybe got a little flustered there with the, the breaking of the mic, you know, wanted to throw it maybe. Uh, anybody know what I'm talking about? All right. <clears throat> um, and so then your mind goes a little blank. But anyway, uh, just keeping it real here. Um, you want to take, take a start yes, here? Yes, certainly. <laughs> We've had mic issues since Wednesday night, so we thought we got it fixed, but apparently not. But it's good. It was good when I turned it, was it on good. originally. It, then I turned it on again, okay. and then it wasn't. All right. Yeah. But uh-huh. we have a special Sunday, so we're going to call Jake and Sheena and their boys up. If you all want to come up, this is their last Sunday here at Beyond. Boom, boom. Hey, hey. So this is actually my brother and sister-in-law and all of my little nephews up here. And, you know, the Bible, uh, they say the Bible, this church um, from the beginning is there's there's words about this church, about being a, being a sending place. And, you know, even as Pastor Austin was talking about a little bit earlier um, about we want people more than anything else is to fulfill their, their destiny. You know, uh, probably the simplest way I actually heard recently uh, to define success is this, to simply discover the reason you were created and fulfill it. Mm-hmm. You can't measure it with dollars, your houses or cars or anything like that, but simply discover the purpose and, and fulfill it. And so um, that's that's the heart really of Beyond uh, Church. It just like, man, fulfill the plan of God for your life, whether it's here, wherever it might be. And so um, sending people is something special. People will come, people will go, people will stay, right? Um, but we're just, we're just so thankful for that. And so you all have been here since you've been married, uh, which has been like eight, 17, 18 years, 17 and a half years. It's keep counting to, to the uh, February here. But anyway, um, and so we just wanted to, we wanted to bless them as a church family. They're going to be moving to Minnesota to continue serving the Lord. Uh, and I just wanted to remind you, we got a couple of scriptures for you uh, this morning before we pray over you. And, and as a congregation, this is a special thing to us because um, he was here through all of Beyond Church, right? He was here with, we actually have Kevin and Susan Fletcher here were the pastors uh, when he first came down here. It's kind of a special day, actually. Uh, graduation was last night, so my, my son graduated, so I got my mom and dad here, and then uh, Evan's mom and dad here. So it's kind of a really special deal for even just the transition service um, or a handoff for their next steps. And so um, as much as the, so talking about destiny, I just want to remind you, we're going to read a couple of scriptures, but I wanted to remind you, Jake, uh, about purpose, uh, and, I, and I'm going to go back to uh, Jeremy Pearson's word, and that is amplifying a message. That's it. And you can call it marketing. You can call it whatever you want to call it. Uh, but bottom line is, uh, it's one, something that I believe that you know in your heart you were created for, and that is to carry a message or to put volume to the message of Christ. And so, um, so I'm excited for that for you guys. And so we're going to um, read a couple of scriptures over you. Um, but really, it's about your next steps. Um, we want to sow into your next steps. Not only with, you know, the Bible talks about sowing the word. So um, the church, you know, people gave to your next steps. We have a, a check. And then also we have uh, some shoes, uh, kind of be kind of something cool to, to, for all of you. All of you got some new kicks. Um, so I don't know where they're at. They're coming out, I guess. Uh, some Nikes. And some Jordans and some, I don't know, some LeBron Jameses, I guess. I don't know. They, they look like Viking shoes, so I thought, you know, when you're trying to pick them out. But what we're doing is we're talking about sewing into your, to your next steps. We just thought it would be cool for you guys to swap them out, do a little swap a uh, real quick. I know that sounds funny, but this is significant to me uh, as time, not only because he's my brother, but because of the seed that he's sewing into this house. You don't realize it, uh, the, the significance, but he was actually the, the first. He came on staff full time before I did here while I was painting and doing construction so that the ministry could continue because um, he did the technical things, right? And so it's special. So anyway, um, those are Jake's. Those are Sheena's. Oh, they had these. These are brand new J's uh, for Jay. Um, and uh, special edition, limited. Anyway, these are the kids. Go ahead and let's swap them out. You might not match, but it doesn't really matter. That's Jonah's. Those are Jonah's. And these are Brighties, Mr. And these are you, Jake. You're the gray or the brown ones. So you don't have to put them on. You can hold them in your hands if you want. Um, we just wanted to make them ready for you guys and give you guys some fresh feet. 
you know? That's how you're supposed to run fresh. And so um, Pastor Evan has a, a couple of verses that we were talking about this week. And so go these ahead and read verses it. came to me at, ugh, I don't want to cry, but it might happen. Um, as I was just praying and seeking the Lord for what to declare over you. And <clears throat> Jeremiah 1, um, 4 through 8 says, The word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, sorry, I knew you, and before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as a prophet to the nations. All Lord God, I said, I surely do not know how to speak, for I am only a child. But the Lord told me, do not say, I am only a child, for to everyone I send you, you must go. And all that I command you, you must speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. So there's that verse. And then the other one was actually in our Bible reading in Acts, and it's just a short one. This is when um, Ananias baptizes Saul after Saul has his encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus. And verse 15, um, Acts 9, 15 says, Go, said the Lord. This man is my chosen instrument to carry my, <clears throat> sorry, to carry my name. And um, what I saw is, Go, says the Lord. These schlegels are my chosen instrument to carry my name. So y'all are chosen. Amen. You're chosen to carry his name. And the two words that I got from those verses was appointed and anointed. Amen. This is an appointed time, but y'all are anointed. You're anointed as a family. You're anointed individually. God saw this before you were born. He appointed you and he chose you. And so, yeah. Amen. Yeah. And the, 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 not just that you were chosen, but that you must go. Yeah. And uh, don't feel, you know, I just think that you might, like those are the things you must go. And so we're excited for your guys' next steps, you young little guys. Uh, you're in our hearts, our families, you guys' family, mm -hmm. um, continuing, not just because of a, a last name uh, in this house, but we believe that even though you're down here with the Schle other Schlegels, only us, your family was much larger. So yeah, uh, we right. just wanted to, this, can we just stand? We're just going to lift up. Uh, can we have Mike forward. and Sabrina and my, my mom and dad come up and yeah. pray with us too? Thank We'd you, love Lord. to have you that. Y'all family come closer together and just huddle around, get all snuggly. Come on in closer, boys, to mom and dad, because it's going to be a tight, tight knit family. Huh? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And this is also a table that um, was made for them. Uh, Pastor Austin made that for you, boys. That was the basketball hoop that y'all played on. And he made it into a table. Is that okay? I just. This was just so in my heart, and I know transitions and, tra and changes can be challenging, right? Can be a little difficult. But I feel just the Holy Spirit rising up in me, and you need to know this is so right. It is so right. You guys need to know it is so right. And you must embrace this step with faith in your hearts. And I just believe there are things in you that have been dormant. They've been there. But it's time for things to come up and out. And just as we pray for you today, that's one of the things I want to, is that okay? Amen. Pray that up and out, up and out for this season. So in the name of Jesus, semando komban deshkitimata. All, all that's been deposited, all that's been invested, all that's been imparted, up and out for this season. Oh, it's needed for the advancement of the kingdom. Here or there, it doesn't matter, you know. It's the kingdom. It's the kingdom. And so, Father, I thank you right now. Up and out. Up and out. The grace. The anointing. Grace. Grace for the place. Grace for the place. Grace for the place. In the name of Jesus. Grace to run this leg of the race. Oh, thank you, Father. So, Father, thank you for fresh, fresh breath in the name of Jesus to everyone. Fresh steps, fresh and easy, even just the new, the new things, just new things, new things. Uh, just an unsticking and a, and, and a sticking too. Uh, un, oh, thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Anointed uh, and appointed. Thank you, Father. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. We bless them. 
We bless them in the name of Jesus. We bless them in their coming, but Father, in their going. Thank you, Lord. And we just say thank you. Thank you for family. Thank you for just uh, connections through you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we bless you guys. Amen. Amen. Last Sunday, y'all leave Thursday, right? Thursday. So um, on top of that, there was uh, the remainder of what came in uh, from the congregation towards your shoes, a check. Uh, we believe it'll be a blessing to you as you guys go increased more and more. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Yep. And afterward, we have a reception for them. So we would love to have you join us in the lobby. We have refreshments and allow you all to just love on them. And yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right. Well, special day for me because mom and dad are in the house. Uh, special. Hey, you, we can. I can teach with that if you want. It's all right. It's right here. Oh, sorry. You had that one too. This will work. Uh, this will work. It'll be great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, y'all may be seated. Yeah, special week for sure um, uh, for us. Just, uh, just you know, God is all about. Um, just memories, events, these are just significant things in our, in our lives, milestones, uh, memories, um, but just with graduation and so on and so forth, that was just special for me, and then obviously having family in town and, and uh, in this time of transition uh, for Jake and Sheena, I believe that God has great things in store for, for not just for Jake and Sheena, but for you and me, yeah. and um, we're in this series called Brighter and Brighter. And, uh, and so we're going to continue that this morning. Um, but before we get into the word, why don't we just take a moment and, and pray. Father, thank you so much to, uh, for having us here today. And we're just asking you to teach us today. Be the teacher. Lord, help us to not interrupt when you speak. Help us not to uh, finish the sentence out of your mouth. But let us hear fully what you have to say. And we're just asking you today just to lead the way. Lead the way in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. And so uh, this is actually week five in this series called Brighter and Brighter. We're talking about a light that shines in the darkness. And that light is um, uh, something that is to continue to shine in the darkness. How many of you know that you can't turn on darkness? Right? But you can turn down light. And as you turn down light, what happens is it gets darker, doesn't it? And so um, how many of you know, like, uh, it seems uh, you've maybe heard this, this statement, it's getting darker and darker out there. Well, that's not God's plan. And it's definitely not God's plan for the church. He says that he's going to come back for a glorious church, a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle. Glorious is bright, bright. And so this is, uh, this is what God says. Again, this is what God says. Um, but darkness is only possible when the light uh, fades or the light is hidden. You know, you, you've heard it said that you're the light of the world. Not just heard it said. This is scripture I found in Matthew. You're the light of the world. You're the, you're the salt of the earth. Talking about the, that passage. But he says that if you have this light, don't put it under a bushel. But instead put it on a, on a pedestal where it can give light to the, the whole house, right? And so it, what you and I do with our light has a huge uh, effect on how dark it is out there. Would you agree? I mean, what you just because I have a light, right? This you know, this little light of mine, right? We sing this as kids. I'm gonna let it shine. But what we do with our light has a huge, huge effect uh, on how dark it gets. But what is it that causes you and me to to how do how we deal with our light? You know, what is it that causes you know uh, you know me to not put it on a bushel? Or not to put it on a bush, not put it on a pedestal, but instead put it under a bush. What is it that co- how do, how do you and I handle our light? Well, some so, uh, sometimes we could question our light. You, you ever wonder that? Do it, here's one of those things. Does it really matter? Is it really that significant what I do? Like just like who, we don't really do we really need to keep fuel in the lamp? Do we really need to keep the light on? Is it does it does it is it making a, 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 any difference? Because all I see is it sure is dark out there, right? So 
ah, what's the point? Like I just see darkness all around. And so, but the Bible tells us that we're to look and be led not by what we see, right? We're, we're to walk by what? By faith, which is what God says. So there's something that God says that, that, that how you and I are to direct our lives. We're not to look at what we see based, and, and that cause us to, to, how we, to uh, be the cause of how we handle our light, but we're to do what God says, right? Another thing that, that seems to hold the strength, especially in this day and age, um, that can cause us not just, just its significance, whether it's making a difference, but it is what other people say or um, fear. How many of you know fear can have you keep that light hidden? Oh, I don't want them to see that. You know, like, what are they going to think of this? You know, right? And um, we're going to get to this this morning. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about, well, let me, just, let me just try to follow this track this morning. I think it'll be, it'll be worth it. So <clears throat> let's, let's, uh, let's pick up right here. Um, Proverbs chapter, uh, or not Proverbs, Psalms 37, uh, verse 23. It tells us that the steps of the righteous man are ordered of the Lord. You, you maybe have heard that verse before, maybe not. Um, but the steps of the righteous man, they're ordered of the Lord. You could say it like this, uh, they are numbered. But you could maybe also say it like this, to be righteous, um, it, it all, the only way you and I are made righteous is we came under his word, under his decree. You're saying, it's not my actions, it's my agreement, it's my coming under what God said, Jesus, right? They, 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 let, me, let me read, read to you um, th this passage. All right, so uh, let's see here, I want to get down here. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, 19 through 20. This is just a pretty simple uh, set of scripture that, that kind of says to you and me what happened when we believed on Christ. How many of you ever maybe read Romans 10, 9, and 10 or heard it? If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, right? Right? You'd be saying, you confer it is with the heart, man, believe, but with the mouth, right? Confession is made unto salvation, right? But what really happened there? The, you and I came into agreement with the judge, with the, with, the all, with, with the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the all-knowing one, with God himself. Look at the, 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 listen to this. It says this. Um, Verse 19, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. What does it mean to reconcile? It means just to bring back together. You know, as it used to be in the garden, when God created it and he said it was good, he said it was good, he said it was good, then he said it's very good. And so God was reconciling or bringing back, and this was always his, his heart and his point, the tree of the uh, uh, knowledge of, of good and evil. It was, it was the tree of life and really a tree of death. It wasn't about being bad. Or being good, it was about caring for his creation that he loved so much. And so many times we get this idea that you're bad and you're good, or you're like we we weigh people by good or bad instead of just life or death. Like that's what he set before us is not good and bad, but life and death. And and we ha so we have to remember that this is how, and, and he said choose life. He he wanted us to have life. Okay. And so this is him saying I'm reconciling back my my, my creation back to me through Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He came that we might have life, John 10, and have it, what, more abundantly. He, he is, this is the goal of our Father, who God was reconciling or bringing back into union together. Uh, here's what it says. Let's read it. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. So as, as God, as judge, as the just judge, and this is how Satan appealed, appeals to, has to appeal to God as judge, as the just judge. He is the accuser of the brethren. He is, let me say it this way, he, he recognizes him even as judge. The ruling of God, even to Satan, he, he's playing, he, he's doing what he's doing because he knows that he has to make a righteous decree. And the, the, uh, the scripture, um, uh, based of scripture for this, this series we're talking about is Proverbs 4.18, which says the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter. And so the, a righteous decree comes from the judge. And so righteous is right e and just, even if it's not the way you and I want it to be. He's just, right? Like the wages of sin does pay. It does. That's, that's what it pays. Well, no, it shouldn't have to. No, no. That's just. That's righteous. That's right. Okay? And so you and I can only be made right not because of what we do, but because we came under a righteous decree. Okay? And so here's what happened is, is that the God was reconciling the world to himself and Christ, not counting the people's sins against them. Whoa. Well, that, that's kind of amazing. That the, the judge 
was not counting, God was not counting the people's sins against them, okay? Um, and this morning's title of this morning's message is this, lead the way, all right? Lead the way, all right? Um, not counting people's sins against them, I keep reading here, but he has committed to us now the message of reconciliation. So this world, in this world, the ministry of reconciliation where, where, where God was at work through Christ, now he's at work through you. It's kind of crazy to think that, that all, all authority has been given to you. So the, the how far darkness is allowed to come, well, that has everything to do with how I handle my life. But fear will keep you and I making decisions. We're going to get to this here. We're, we're working our way down. We'll get there in a minute, moment. He said, committed to us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 20, wherefore we are Christ's ambassadors or sent ones, you know, carrying a kingdom. An ambassador carries all the, uh, under authority, carrying that decree, carrying uh, the, the authority of that, that kingdom. Uh, as though God were making his appeal through us. Wow, that's pretty powerful. So you carry, you and I carry uh, the kingdom of heaven with us, even in us. And so sometimes we're looking for hope and we're looking for life, we're looking for rivers, but he said out of, you are the light of the world. He said out of your bellies are to be flowing rivers of living water. Christ in you is the hope of glory, of the brightness but we're looking for brightness all, all around, but it's in me. But you and I have to, we're going to have to let him lead the way and let him teach, and let the teacher teach instead of me saying, yeah, I know, but here's what I think and blah. Okay, let's keep going here. He says, um, we are Christ's ambassadors as God is making his appeal through us. We implore you or beg of you on Christ's behalf. Like I'm, I'm coming to you and I'm saying on Christ's behalf who came to, to, to reconcile the world to himself. He says, hey, be reconciled to God. Like this is, he's, he's carrying this message, be reconciled to God. And this is what he said. God, let me um, go back to verse 19. He said, uh, it was God reconciled the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. Verse 21, God made him, because he had to put it somewhere, right? He had to count somewhere. It could, he didn't count it to you, but God, here's what he did. He made him who had no sin, Jesus Christ, made him to be, be sin for us. So there was a replacement. There was a payment that was made, and it was God who said, I'm going to send my son to pay for you. Wow, that, this is incredible love. Uh, a, a sinless, spotless, left heaven came, paid a price for you and me. This is Christianity, and this is, it's not about trying to be right. It's coming under a righteous decree. You, you're, you're in my righteousness is the Bible says is as filthy rags. You know what that means? It means that they're dirty. It's, it's the most vile thing that you, you're, we can't live up to it. And yet, and yet sometimes we, we expect other people's to live up to our filthy rags. But God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the what? The righteousness of God. So this is something that the word of God was, was spoken, decreed. Maybe you've heard this message and this message comes to you, but you have a, there's a decree. This is the God's judgment. What do you say? What do you say? Do you say that Jesus has paid, paid a price enough? Because, you know, for you and I to be made righteous, there's not really much work you have to do other than come under that decree. You, you have to simply say, I'm going to deny my self. My, my thoughts, my ways, and what my judgment, and, and I'm going to have to judge not by what I see, but by faith. But, and faith comes by hearing what God says. Well, God said this, and that's, that's what it must be. That's that, that, that is the way. And we're asking him to lead the way. Lead the way. Let's, let's keep going here. So Isaiah 54, verse 13. Isaiah 54, verse 13. I, I love this scripture. It's talking about in Zion, talking about God restoring and bringing back the children of Israel. He says, your children will be taught of the Lord and great will be their peace. Okay. What, what the Amplified says, great will be their peace and undisturbed composure. Like there'll be like my composure here earlier when, when the, when the mic went out, I, I was flustered like, ah, oh, oh, you know, uh, where things are going, when little things go wrong, it can fluster you. But be, be like taught of the Lord. But so there, there's something that happens when you and I are taught of the Lord. 
what happens when you and I are taught of the Lord, there's peace. When we come under what God's word says concerning everything in life, when we find out what he has to say, what you'll find is there will be peace. So, so this is huge. So, but here's the thing. In order to be taught, this is one, something in, in, in kids' class. I remember kids' class, but elementary and all the way through school. I don't know so much nowadays that they can really enforce it, at least for, you know, maybe some of the stories. But there used to be this, this thought or this idea that the teacher teaches best, right? And there was this like, no talking when the, when the teacher's talking. Well, we have a teacher and it's the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, it's better that I go away. This is John, John 14 and 16, but he's better that I go away that, because I'm going to send you a teacher. And this teacher, he's going to lead and guide you in all truth. And he's going to show you things that come, remind you of things. He is the teacher. And so at a young age, we, we are taught, you know, whether we're, you know, sitting in kids' church or we're at school and preschool, no talking when the teacher's talking. Um, we were taught to raise our hand or, or to wait till they were done. You know, how many of you have ever had that experience? Like, you know, you're re- re- raising your hand and you're just like, the teacher keeps talking. You're like, I just, come on, come on. I'm jumping up and down, you know, and maybe you're one of the ones that blurted it out or you, you know, it's like, uh, uh, wait until I'm done. And have you ever found that sometimes that the teacher will finish, uh, will answer your question if you would just wait a little bit longer? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I've also had it said where, uh, you know, can I go to the bathroom? And she said, no, uh, I don't know, can you? You know, and then they use that word may. Well, I saw this funny uh, meme or whatever they call it. it the teacher said, um, there was a teacher and the kid said, uh, can I, can, I do some, uh, so can I do some homework so I can get my grade up? Or can I do something for extra credit? And she said, it's May. And he goes, may I do some homework so I can get my te- my Okay, hold on. I bet you that really bad. <laughs> my brain was like all the way onto something else. Um, the, t- the kid said, teacher, teacher, can I do some, ex- some extra assignments to get my grade up? And she said, it's May. And he goes, may I do some homework to get some... <laughs> But it's May, like we're at the end of the school year, buddy. It's May. All right. Um, so anyway, I thought that was pretty funny. But there's something about teaching. There's something about teaching that works best when we use our ears. You know, the Bible tells us to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Okay? So how do we use in our ears? And so I wanted to take a look, and this really piggybacks off of last week's message. Really, all of this series, like I, I always, we, I don't teach in series. Like, in other words, trying to say something. A lot of times I don't. But this mess, this series, uh, this, these past messages coming out of Easter, to me, felt very significant. That it would really cause hope in you and me. A picture of brightness. And, and I remember asking the Lord, like, should we teach on family? Should we teach on finances? Should we teach on this? Should we teach on that? Like, all of these kind of things that seemed right. But, it, but what, what seemed more right than anything else was to establish a righteous way. And so this is where we were t- we teach, teaching on brighter and brighter, a light in the darkness. Because everybody's dealing with different things. However, the, the, God's word is always the answer. It's always the answer. So last week, we, there, we, we, it was Mother's Day, and I taught about 15 minutes, and then we shared a message. And this message was by Jeremy Pearsons, and it was talking about judging. And that message was so great because it was the Word of God, but it was so great for this house because sometimes we have to hear uh, the message from somebody else other than mom and dad or other than pastor or other than... How many of you appreciate... I was just talking about this this morning with my dad. Uh, I, I appreciate, as my sons uh, were starting a lawn mowing business a couple of years ago, I appreciate one of the people that he mowed for was our youth pastor, Austin Howard. You know why? Because he, he had a high, uh, high standard for what his grass should look like. And so, uh, and I said, please, he's, I said, please tell them, tell them what, what I would tell them all along. You know, like this needs to be done. This right here, this needs to be done. How many of you know? And they had to rise to that standard that I didn't set. Somebody else said it. And so because somebody else said it, all of a sudden now it makes sense. You ever had that where you've been telling your kids this the whole time, right? But now somebody else says it and they're like, oh yeah, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, how many times did I say that? But you didn't get it. And, and so there was this, there was this, this anointing 
last week to hear a message that really is a righteous way. And so the, a righteous way, talking about the love of God, talking about how we're to approach people, talking about it, it, it's so significant. It's so significant. We can't go, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. No, no. I, it, proof of what I know is what I do. <laughs> okay? Um, that's a fact. Because if I know, yeah, I know I would die if I jumped off of this. You, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, and so I wanted to take, take us to Luke chapter 7. Verse 36 uh, through 50 this morning. So Luke uh, 7, 36 through 50. And that, that one might have got kind of buried, honestly, in my notes. Um, it was a small piece, but it was a large portion uh, of this morning. Um, Luke chapter 7. And this is the story uh, of, of somebody that was loved much. Okay? Let me jump in here. This table's a little bit bigger. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Starting in uh, Luke 7, verse 36. Um, I'm reading out of the BSB. So, all right. This says, Then one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to eat with him. And he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. When a sinful woman from the town learned that Jesus was dining there, she brought an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. And he wiped them, or she wiped them with, with her hair. Then she kissed his feet and then anointed them with this perfume. Verse 39. When the Pharisees who had invited Jesus saw this, he, um, he said to himself, Is this man, if this man were a prophet, okay? So when the Pharisee that invited Jesus into his home said, if he knew something that Jesus didn't know, okay? Did you ever maybe find yourself in a place that, in a place of judgment that where you knew something that Jesus didn't know? A righteous way, we're talking about a righteous way, how a righteous way that leads to brightness. A righteous way is coming under what God says. But sometimes you and I come under things that God isn't saying at all. And we, we jump to a conclusion before he has had the opportunity to speak. And we wonder why our, our lives are being led to darkness. Like I, my, so often my life is led to darkness because, because I speak before he, before he had the chance. Or, or, or even like last week talking about judgment, it's hard for me to forgive somebody because I judged what they did. I judge what they did, and I judge if this is and why they did what they did, and how many, how long they have thought about doing that to that, and they said this because of that, and all, and and, and it's a dark way, isn't it? And, and and as I judge, it becomes harder and harder to forgive or to yield, or to yield. This is what we're talking about to a righteous way. It comes, it becomes hard. Have you ever been there where you could see this and I could see this and I could see this and I could see this. And then the Lord says, but I want you to do this. And you're like, uh, well, that's kind of tough. Why? Because this, 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 and this. And he's like, you, you, what you're seeing, you're not seeing. Did you know that the, the Bible tells us that we don't wrestle against each other? Did you know that there, in Ephesians, it says that you two once blinded by the prince of the, like the powers of the air, blinded. Did you know sometimes we make decisions because we're blind and that the one behind it is not, is not the person? There's decisions that are made that are altered and they're made on the, uh, somebody uh, out, of, out of darkness, out of darkness, out of darkness, out of darkness. Somebody needs to flip on the light. How do I flip on the light? Well, we're going to get to that in a second. All right, let's keep going. So he said, uh, when the Pharisee who had invited Jesus saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet... <laughs> Sometimes we even judge what God knows. Isn't that crazy? Based on what we see. He would know who this is and what kind of woman is touching him. For she is a sinner. But Jesus answered him. <laughs> I love this. Uh, he says, I have something to tell you. And this is what I love. This tell me, teacher. I love that. That line just had jumped out, out at me so much. He said, tell me, teacher. Tell me, teacher. You know, this is, the, this is the place right here where something can, something can change. Tell me, teacher. Tell me what I don't see. Because I see this, and I see this, and I see that. Tell me what I don't know. Because I know this, and I know, and I know, and I know. Tell me, teacher. He said, tell me, teacher. He said, two, and Jesus said, two men were debtors. 
uh, to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. When they were unable to repay him, he forgave both of them, which one of them, uh, which one then will love more. So he forgave both. He said, which one's going to love more? The one that had, there was two people that had a bunch of debt. One owed a little bit, one owed a lot. Which one's going to love more? And the, the Pharisees responded back, verse 43, I suppose the one who was forgiven of more. He said, you judged correctly, Jesus said. And turning toward the woman, he said, uh, and turning toward the woman, he said to Simeon, do you see this woman? When I had entered her house, you did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and they wiped them, and then wiped them with her hair. You did not greet me with a kiss, but she has not stopped kissing my feet since I've arrived. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with perfume. Perfume. Therefore, I tell you, because her sins are many, because her many sins have been forgiven, she has loved much. But he who has been forgiven of little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. But those at the table began to say to them, who is this who even forgives sins? And Jesus told the women, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. He who was forgiven of little struggles to love very much. We were talking last week about two things that we struggle with, worry and judgment. Every person here, judge, worry and judgment. Could it be we struggle with judgment because we don't realize how much we were loved? How much... God paid for you and me. The price of my sins, listen, nobody's sin out here costs more than mine. Nobody's sin out here costs more than mine. Isn't that a, there's a thought. Teach us, teacher. Nobody's sin out here costs more than yours, Austin. Yours was unbelievable. No one's cost more, Ben, than yours. Do you know that? Do you know, Philip, do you know that nobody's sin costs as much as your sin? I think it's time that we recognize the price of my sin. Because he said, for one man's sin, Jesus no one's sin is worse than my sin. I was the one that put him on the cross. Wow. So now I no longer regard people according to what I see. But I regard them only according to what God says. Wow, that's, what are you, Lord, what is your decree? And, and when I allow him to lead the way and allow him to be the teacher, it's amazing what happens to you and me. Let's keep going here. So, one of the things that, um, I, I, I don't think, I think this, the message of the gospel sometimes is, um, we hear it as good news, but it's really not as good a news as it should be, because we don't really realize how bad the news was. The news was really bad for you. The news was really bad for me. The news was, you're going to die and be tortured because of what you've done. But the good news came. And see, this is the thing. Like Jesus came to tell the good news to a people that were very aware because of the law and because of a holy God, they were very aware of their shortcomings. And so when that news came that there was a price paid, one man for that one man, one the equal exchange, the same way that one by one man's sin, death entered. Now, now too, the Bible tells us in Romans, by one man's sin or righteousness, now we can be saved. Jesus. They understood that this good news was their price has been paid. But I think, I don't realize, realize, I don't think that right now in this, what's sin? What's this, what, I'll tell you what sin is. It's not just sex. It's not just drinking. It's not just blah, 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 whatever you can call. It's anything that opposes what God says. And that pays death. So what opposes what God says, oftentimes I'm opening the, the, the wages. Okay, all right. Chapter 
Check, check. All right. Uh, so what were we saying? Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm sowing because of my judgment or because, because I'm saying what God didn't say. That's what sin is. Sin is anything that God says doesn't say. That's sin. So if I say if, if I if I decree something about somebody that God didn't say, I'm putting myself in a place that's in opposition to God. In a place of judgment. And guess what? I guess I, I get to open myself too. Am I like reverb and this is way different? It's way louder of all you maybe. Um, talk down lower. No, it's fine? Okay. All right. So, um, and so my, my judgment so oftentimes that we don't, there's, there's something that I believe is missing uh, and that we need to let back into this house and back into the church, and back into our household, and back in as a mother and a father, and as a friend, uh, this is, needs to be a part of our awareness, and that is the fear of God. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the consuming fire, the great I am. The, like we, This has to come back. Because your and my decisions, oftentimes, are, they're not, they're, this is where we're going back to this, light of, this little light of mine. Why do I hide it under a bushel? Well, maybe because a lot of times, and we're going to talk about fear, fear of man. We have more respect and honor for what man says or what I say. Fear of man is not just afraid of somebody. It's honor and reverence. And that fear of man is equally as much as what I think, uh, how much I honor my word and how much I revere myself and my judgments and my approach. And this is what I think and this is how I see and this is what I think it says. And I sit here in the church and I finish quoting the scripture that Pastor Nate reads rather than here letting the teacher fully say what's going to be said. He's probably going here next. He's probably going here next. You can, you're you're going to leave. You're going to leave without having been led. So, there's a, there's, a, there's a truth that you can see throughout the Word, and that is the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You can see this all over through the Word, okay? But Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Probably the beginning of Proverbs. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, understanding, all of these kind of things. So, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom of God, but the fear of man is the beginning of wisdom of man. When I, when I, where I honor man, their word reigns supreme. Okay? Let's, let's keep going. Uh, but here's the thing. The, what, what you, one of the things you'll find is where the fear of the Lord is, there's, there's brightness. If you look through the, the, the accounts through Old Testament and New Testament, when, the, when God showed up, brightness showed up. But often what was accompanied when God showed up was also this something called trembling. This, this, uh, you remember when, when Mary, uh, you know, the, she gave birth and, and here out in the field, shepherds, okay, I got, I got, I, I need you to know that shepherds were not weenie little guys. They were guys that they lived out in the wilderness. They slept with the bears and the lions and protected the sheep. They stayed warm by what they could do. They were a man's man. A shepherd was a tough guy. And, and the glory of God shone around them, and they were what? Sore afraid. So brightness, light, there, there's something about where the fear of the Lord, it truly is the beginning of wisdom or light or understanding. It's that fear of the Lord. When Paul was on his way to Damascus, what happened? It says that the light shone around him, and he fell to the ground. How, light makes you fall to the ground when it has power. Absolutely, when it has power. And this is something that has to get back into, into your and my uh, approach is what does God say? The glory of the, like a fear, like what does God say? Coming under that righteous decree, that is the key to your and my salvation. Not just eternal salvation, but walking in uh, peace. Because those who are taught of the Lord are what? He said their great would be their what? Their peace. Their wholeness, their nothing missing, nothing lacking, their, and their composure, even their face. When you're taught of the Lord, your face will look different. My, when I, what, is, what, is, what is he saying? What does he say concerning your finances? Well, yeah, da, da, da. no, no, what did he say? Well, I, uh, what did he say? Well, maybe you got to hear it again. Maybe i got to hear it again. And this is why when we hear a message again and again, it's actually the mercy of God. It's like a teacher not just moving on. Like, hey, 
For me, that was probably one of the most frustrating things in my senior year. I was in trigonometry. And uh, I was a senior, and at the beginning of, uh, of, of the school year, uh, I, I was playing sports, and it required me to leave my last hour of class early, okay? And because of that, for the first week and a half, uh, what, he, what this teacher said, what I'm going to teach is foundational to what we're going to be talking about. And so if you don't get this, you're not going to get anything. I know some of you guys are going to have to be dismissed early. I, was, I actually was one of the few seniors in trig. A lot of my friends were either way like in calculus or just were like, eh, forget that. And uh, so I'm like, I'm going to take it. And, and guess what I miss pretty much every day? Foundations. And you know what? You know what the next week he went into? The next thing. Why? Because the whole class has got it. So we're just going to move along, except for me. I didn't get it. So I found myself trying to understand the whole time I'm behind, 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 behind. You ever, you ever have, a, maybe some of you have a kid that's an intervention in school. Maybe if, you, if they go to public school or whatever, there may be an intervention. I had one that was in intervention at a young age. And what happens is, is the, kid, the class goes on while they're gone. And so they can never, in a sense, they can never catch up because there's no waiting. And there's no going over that again. But aren't you thankful that God comes to us again? And so I can't despise his mercy and his kindness that he would come again, knowing that it is goodness. It is his goodness that leads us to repentance. Like the only reason that the Lord would come to you and me with a message that we're not doing yet is because his desire for you and me is one for our good. Sometimes, though, we get upset when I have to hear about, I don't know what it could be. It could be uh, anything, anything that you're doing or not doing that's leading to death. And the Lord's like, I wanted to talk to you about that again. And I know the whole class needs to move on. But just today, I wanted to talk to you about forgiving. I know, I know, I know we talked about that last week. But just today, I, I, I come and, I, and we're talking about this again. Because, you need, because I, I want to lead you in a way. I want to lead you in a way that's a turnaround. That no longer going that way. And so, but, but this only happens when we say, uh, go ahead, teacher, teach. This, that's how, that's how that, this is the only way that happens, or like this. Okay. Lead the way. Lead the way. There's something that happens when I'm not responsible to get there. But he is. If I just come under his, under his word. All right, Ephesians chapter 5. <laughs> this is so good, because... I believe God wants you and me to live in a place of fulfillment. And the only way you and I can live in a place of fulfillment is when you and I are living with and on purpose. It says this. It says, be careful. Be careful or pay careful attention, rather. Pay careful attention then how you walk. We're, again, this whole passage, this whole, this whole series has been about walking a path. The path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter. Okay? He says, so pay careful attention how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise. We established a little bit earlier that how do I get wisdom? Where does it start? What do I got to get back in here? Fear. Because we're, we're, you'll find that fear, the fear of the Lord or this honor, the reverential awe for what God says as being a righteous decree and the right way, that right there, that's how he says, so, so be careful, pay attention how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. So get that, get that back in there. What does God say? Redeeming the time, and I love that, redeeming the time, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So what do you, Lord, what do you say? See, because what you, when, when we're under what he says, it doesn't matter what they say. Or what the naysayer, like, and what happens is the light that's in me and the light that I've been given to shine will shine because you or anything I see has no authority in my life to determine what I do with this light that's in me that God has given me. But this light, I'm shining for him. And so I'm going to stand for him where I'm supposed to stand for him. We have this conversation recently. I bet you most people in here have had some kind of conversation regarding something along these lines. How do you be a light when everything just seems to be going this way? You don't be afraid to let the light, love of God shine. 
I, I don't judge any, I don't look at what I see. I say, Lord, what do you say? What do you say? And I come under that authority and I let it shine. Your children's children would maybe like for the light to be on in your home. Jesus is coming back for a glorious church. He's coming back for a church that has its lights on. He's coming back for your and my house is to be bright. Our path is to shine brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. So what do we do? We ask, uh, we ask him. We say, Lord, teacher, teach me. Lead the way. Move, we move from the I think, I know, I see, I judge. See, because the promised land... Like, you remember this, maybe you remember this passage where, where he said, every place you set your feet, I will give you. Do you remember this, this is in, in, in the Old Testament, he, there was a promise from God, and he said, every place you set your feet, I will give you. But did you know that, that it was the words that opposed what God said that kept the people out of the land? Those people had to pass and their words had to come into agreement with God so that they could possess the land. And every place they set their feet, that they, they were given. Wow, that sounds like James. That where your mouth speaks, your feet will travel. My mouth, how do, how do I come into agreement? How do I come, how do I recognize, how does fear get brought back into my life? And how does light get, I'll tell you how, agree with God. That's it. Teach me, teacher. Come home and say, yeah, yeah, the, the teacher told me. The teacher said, you know, when your kid goes to kindergarten and all of a sudden everything changes because the teacher said, like we, the teacher said, oh, yeah, yeah, I know the teacher said, come, just come into that. And what you'll find is when I come into agreement and I let the words of my mouth agree with the righteous judge, salvation is made unto salvation. For it is with the heart you believe or, and you receive, you got to receive. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Every promise, everything in the word, it has you, everything that you see has, has everything to do, or every, every, pro, excuse me, let me slow down. Every promise in here, all of salvation is appropriated by the same law. Believe in your heart and speak with your mouth. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, are you arguing with the teacher? What does he say? You'll, you'll find this all through. Yeah, but this looks like this and looks like this. Look at this in Wednesday night's message. So if you could listen to Sunday, last Sunday, and Wednesday, and then listen to today. We have our eyes so fixed on just this moment, our patience. It doesn't happen in this amount of time. And so we call God's seed incor or corruptible. But he said it's incorruptible. It's incorruptible. He's watching over it to perform it. It might not be on your timeline, but let me ask you this. Will God find faith on the earth when he comes? Will he find faith in your house when he comes? Well, that's up to you. How, how, how are you sure that there will be faith, that you'll stand with what God says? Because my mouth will agree with what he says. You will find it in me. Oh, you don't know about that. I know my will. I'm responsible for my will. In my mouth. So you know, it's, it's time that we agree with what God says. Period. Even if I'm upset. Even if blah, blah, blah. Even whatever it looks like. And you know what happened? Peace. Lord, you say, I don't know how this works and works. This works. Have you ever seen a tension table? Maybe you, uh, I was going to actually build one and have it up here for this week. Um, but a tension table has five cords. It could be a chain. It could be in the four corners, a cable that just is flopsy, right? Has no ability to hold, uh, to hold a table up. But when there, there's another chain put in the middle pulling the opposite direction, it's like it's a brain bender. It's pulling the opposite direction, and all of a sudden, these cords, because of an opposite pull, you have a rigid table from flopsy cords because there's laws that are greater. And laws that you don't understand. And the same law that would be able to take this paper airplane whew, is the same law that's able to take a 747 with 400 passengers. We operate by certain laws that we understand. Oh, yeah, daddy, 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 can you build me a paper airplane? How many dads could build a paper airplane? Well, how many dads ever thought, uh, 
when you see your kid fly it, that if it spins in a circle like that, you think I got to what? Maybe tip the wings out a little bit. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Or maybe if it just dives, you might think I got to bend the back. Maybe, maybe you're not an engineer, but like dads, most dads are like, oh, we can fix that. Right. And so you have this, uh, this idea or this assessment to how to make it work on a paper airplane. Did you know that somebody had a big hunk of metal and said, well, you know how we had that lift back a little bit? Let's just make it to where those can be adjusted by the pilot to where when it's dop, the same law. It's the law of lift. It's greater. But it ha- somebody had to come under that law and not, in, in order for that to work. You and I, when we come under his law, it'll work. It'll work. And I'll have a, a light, a, a, the light. Jeremiah 6, 16. I want to kind of close with this. These two passages coming again because we've already talked about this in the weeks prior. It says this, it says, this is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. And then you know what he says? He says, use your eyes. And then he says, ask. And you know what he says to ask for? Ask for the ancient past. You know, I've, I've, we've quoted this for a lot of times here. I don't know that we really understand ancient past, eternal paths, ever existing path. You know who that can only come from? Him. Lord, what do you say? This is what this looks like. Lord, what do you say about this? I know I'm filled with care. I know I'm just madder than a bat. I know I'm just ready to strike. I know I'm just afraid. I know I just want to cast a stone. I know I, I, I know, I know. Ask. Ask who? Ask the eternal one. Ask the Lord. Ask for the path that doesn't, that was ancient, meaning before and will never cease to exist way. There's ways that you and I are to be operating by. And then uh, he says, and walk in it. And he said, you guys said, then walk in it and you will find what? You'll find rest for your souls. <sighs> Could it be as simple as this? You, you or me just being under authority? You weren't created to try to self-navigate or to self-produce or to self, but instead just say, lead the way, Father. Come unto me, all that you who are weary and heavy laden. He said, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, because my way is easy and rest. Do you know there's things that we have that are causing weight on our shoulders? And it's just not God's way. You know the decisions, they might be in a place of decision, 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 decision. You can just, all of the storms, you can just say, Lord, lead me. Lead the way. And whatever you say, whatever you say, I'll, I'll, I'll do. You know, he'll, he'll get that to you. Look at this, and this, we're closing with this scripture. And we went, we went over this a few times. Because when you're willing to hear, your ears are open. You know, um, I can tell you from my own experience, uh, I've sat in the audience and listened to somebody teach that I was upset with in my heart. Anybody ever been there? You might be there now. You know, just, you're kind of just, whatever. He doesn't know. She doesn't know if they knew. And, you, and so you sit in this, stand in this place of judgment, right? And it's just like what is said doesn't minister to you. Like the Holy Spirit, the teacher, it was just so dry. Mm-hmm. That's because the teacher that you and I need, that's the comforter, my strengthener, my advocate, the one to show the way, he's not allowed to show up because I'm talking. And he's gentle and low. He's, he's patient. He's just waiting, honestly, for you and me to be quiet. But when I'm willing to hear and say, Lord, what are you? My ears opened. You know, again, let's, let's close with this verse. 2 Corinthians 3, 16 through 18. It says this. And this is for... Sometimes we don't put ourselves in the place that we should, and that's that of a Pharisee. Did you know you could be a Pharisee? Did you know I can be a Pharisee? Where I judge and I honor the Lord with my lips, but my heart is unwilling to yield to what he says, because I know, because they, or whatever it might be, or my, my, my experience of life about how somebody was healed or wasn't healed, or blah, whatever it might be, my experience reigns supreme over what God says, and I become a Pharisee. That's how, that's how I become a Pharisee. It's not 
replacing all of God's word. It's just not accepting all of God's word that allows me to be a Pharisee. He says, but their minds, 2 Corinthians 3.16, he says, but their minds were closed. So when your, your mind is closed, when you know, you know we're not, you're not changing my mind. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just talk, 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 talk. My mind's made up. I already know why you're saying what you're saying. Blah, 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 blah. Yakety yak. That's all you hear. It says, but their minds were closed, for to this day the same veil remains at the reading of the Old Covenant. When you have your mind made up, there's a veil. That's simple. When, I'm, when I don't say teach your teach, teach your talk, when I don't say lead the way, then what happens is I allow a veil to be there. My will, my will. He says, because only in Christ can it be removed. Only in what? In Christ. What is Christ? Christ is the one that God sent to reconcile or to, to, as payment for you and me. That, I, I, only if I receive that. That's the, that only if I receive a righteous decree can, can the veil be lifted concerning all the other things. And that veil, that, that price that was paid, I'm telling you, this is so key for, for, for love to be faith worketh by love. We want to walk in faith, but we don't want it to work. It's like trying to have walk at night with a flashlight, but not have batteries in it. Faith works by love. I have, I have to recognize the gift and the greatness of the gift of Jesus to me. Anyways, he goes on to say this. He says, but their minds were closed. For to this day, the veil remains at the reading of the old covenant. It has not been lifted because only in Christ can it be removed. And even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But this is the, this is the most beautiful thing ever. Verse 16. But, but whenever anyone turns to the Lord... The veil is taken away. When he knocks, when he comes again, when we, even when we just, he, like we talked about this, about mercy and kindness. The, we don't think that the mercy, he said in Romans, he said, do we despise the mercy of God? We, we think too little of it, that, that it's, someone needs to be judged instead of like, or do we despise the mercy, the kindness of God, not knowing that it is that mercy that leads one to repentance. It is that mercy that allows one to turn and the veil to be taken away. It is the love of God, the goodness of God that tells us. That's it. You didn't come to Christ because you're so great. How did Christ find you? He loved me. He loved me. This is how he's still looking for people today. Salvation, come into your house. Because he loved me. Because he loved me. And he said, and because he loved me, I turned. Because he loved me. I turned. And, and, and he says, the veil was taken away. Now, the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we who with unveiled faces are to reflect or all reflect the glory of the Lord are being transformed into his image with intensifying glory, which comes from the Lord, who is a spirit. How am I changed? Teach me. That's it. Teach me. As I behold, what, as I behold, as I look and I listen to what you say above what I say, there's a change that happens in my life. There's a change that happens, and there's a brightness that leads my way. I'll tell you, the answer to every one of your questions is as simple as this. What does God say? I know that it's like, oh, this is just too charismatic, too. No, no, no. This is how you and I were saved. This is the law that lifted the 747. This is the, let me say this, this is the law that lifted the heaviest thing off of you, and that is the sin and death. That same law lifts all the effects of sin. Still, it didn't just lift an eternal judgment. It is the good news. It is the good news. Thank you, Father. Father, thank you so much for, um, just for your word. Lord, I'm asking uh, this morning for just our approach to be different. Just a different approach uh, to your word. Not as duty, but as delight. That even as we approach our days... Um, we would see that I need to hear what you have to say. It's my lamp. It's my light to my feet. I, I need to hear what you have to say. 
What do you say, Lord? What do you say? That there would be just those questions. That as we stand at the crossroads of decision in our life and we look, we would see, uh, we would see this and see that and see this. And it, all of, all of the, what we see, would pr- it produces a word, but your word would be what's heard above the rest because we would ask. So, Lord, I'm asking, and I just thank you. You just do that same thing. Ask the Lord concerning maybe uh, maybe it's, there's a trial. Maybe there's a decision. Maybe there's a uh, purpose. Maybe there's what now. Like you can't, haven't been able to put your, your finger on it, and you just have been trying to just wrestle, 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 wrestle. Well, we're going to ask the Lord this morning to show us the way, show us what he would say. And we're going to trust that if we ask, that he would answer. Father, we ask you right now concerning the steps and the days, concerning decisions, concerning relationships. What do you say? We'll side with you so that salvation can be our testimony. the blood of Jesus, paying a price for my sin, for their sin, for the payment of death. Father, I thank you that your church, your children, would be a testimony for the world to see You as a father, as a king, well able, Lord. I thank you for brightness that doesn't depend on me, doesn't depend on you. Just ask the Lord for that. that, Father, thank you for brightness in my home, in my children that doesn't all depend on me. Lord, I trust you. I trust you with my children. I trust you with my marriage. I trust you. I trust what you say. I use my words to uh, re-address where I've been not in trust with you. I changed my path. I trust you, Lord. I trust you. And I just thank you for rest, Lord. You said that that would, would be the, the result. You'd find rest for your souls. I, you said that come unto me that you are that are heavy laden, that you said, and, and learn of me, learn of me. So teach us. And thank you for rest. That we would not be a tired people. I rebuke tiredness in the name of Jesus. Take your hands off these people. But strength. Because those who wait upon the Lord. You said there would be a renewing of strength. There would be a soaring over adversity. They would mount up. Father, thank you for strength, for running a race, for fuel in a lamp, for for fresh fire, for this time redeemed, walking with wisdom. It's a place of rest. And we just receive it today. A place of rest. And I thank you for strength just being seen. No more tired faces. For your glory, Lord. The path of the righteous, you said it would shine brighter and brighter and brighter. And so, Father, thank you for increased brightness on this house, increased brightness on this people. For your glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. You know, 
It's important to declare the word. You declare it. Get into that heart and, and get into agreement and, and watch, watch your words move your feet into a place of promise. Don't wait till you see the land. Don't wait till you see it. Wait, look, get your words in agreement and you'll find that every place you put your feet, the Lord will give you. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it, this is important. This is important. Before we go this morning, if you are here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, if you never, the, it's simple as this. We've talked about it all morning. That if you believe in your heart and com, confess Jesus as Lord, that the, the God sent his son Jesus, right? And he rose again. Like this, this is a righteous decree. Jesus, life for your life. And you want to make that exchange this morning. Right where you're at. Let's lift our hands. If, you, if that's you, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I, I'm looking right now, and you want to give your life to Jesus, make, make sure that heaven's your home, and really just see salvation in your life. It starts right here. I don't see any hands. If you're online, the same is true. It's as simple as this, that you believe in your heart, and you say with your mouth, Jesus, you're my Lord. You're my Lord, because you believed it, because you came under that word. That's how salvation takes place. I'm going to lead you in that. And you just say this. Say, Father, today I give you my life. I say with my mouth what you said. That Jesus, your son, was sent for me, for my sins. That he paid the price. That he died. But that you rose him from the dead. And today, because a payment was made, I too am raised with you. Thank you for saving me, for sending a payment that I couldn't pay, for loving me much. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Well, God bless you guys this Sunday. We'll see you Sunday, next Sunday um, or Wednesday night, but otherwise Memorial Day picnic. Again, if there's no service here, it's going to be next weekend uh, picnic. Bring us side. We'll have meats and drinks and all that stuff. So, uh, And then there's a party or like a bunt cake, nothing but love, not, nothing bunt love for the Schlegels uh, out in the lobby. So grab a cookie and uh, God bless you.